Stitches show and welcome October. It is time for the 10th installment in our 2020 Patchwork Square calendar blanket. This month we're going to do a big blocks square. This is just big blocks of color. It's also known though as the high square depending on how you color it. I'm going to demonstrate this two color version today and of course if you hold the block this way you get an H. But if you turn it this way you get an I. Hi! <laughs> Of course, I'm also going to show you another version I made using a bunch of different colors so you can get a really good idea of how changing up the colors with this particular design really changes up the look of the pattern. I also love this one. It looks a bit like a ladder or maybe some brightly colored columns. If you're looking for a little extra color inspiration, Mr. and Stitches will put a few different options in around here somewhere. <laughs> And of course, like the rest of the squares in this blanket, you want to use the same kind of yarn and the same hook size so they all fit together. That said, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up the October square together. In order to make our October squares, we're going to be using the same yarn and the same hook we've been using for the rest of the project. For me, that's an acrylic size 4 medium weight yarn and a 5.5 millimeter hook this is also known as an I or a 9 in the US, a size 5 in the UK. A pair of scissors and a yarn needle, that rounds out the tools, and depending on how you color in your graph will determine how much of each color you need. Each of these middle patches requires 15 yards of yarn per patch, and each of these two rectangular patches on either side of our square requires 18 yards of yarn. So 15 for the three middle ones each and 18 for each of the two sides, plus nine or 10 yards of your border color for that last little row in our square. Once you've got all that together, we can get started. I always recommend that you draw a quick diagram of the square you're going to be doing and color it in appropriately. This will help you keep track of where you are as we move through the project. We're going to be working on the three middle pieces first. We're going to start in the bottom middle, add the second patch, then the third patch, and then add the two side patches at the end. So we're going to begin down here. Grab the color of your bottom middle patch now. We're all going to begin with a slip knot on our hook. And we're going to chain 22 to begin. Once you've got 22 chains, we're going to skip the first three chains from the hook, find the fourth and double crochet into it. We're using double crochet throughout this project. The turning chains on the end of a row always count as a stitch, so in this case it's three, and that counts as a double crochet. You're going to double crochet into each chain all the way back to the beginning, and at the end of row one, you're going to have 20 stitches. At the end of row one you'll have 20 stitches. That includes the little turning chains here at the end. For every row hereafter you're going to chain two and turn. The chain two at the beginning of every row counts as a double crochet, which means that this first stitch, this guy right here, is already used and accounted for. So picture your chains as a double crochet sitting on top of that stitch. Instead, we're double crochet into the next stitch. That's where you work your first real double crochet. Double crochet in each stitch all the way across and double crochet into the top of the turning chains at the end of every single row. Don't forget the top of the turning chains. That's where your last stitch will always go. And for every row, we're going to have 20 stitches in total. That includes the turning chains. And I'll see you at the end of the row. The last stitch of every row is worked into the top of the turning chains from the row before, so don't miss it. Just find the top of the chains and stick your hook through the top of it, and that's where you work your last double crochet. So this will ensure that you always have the right stitch count and that your ends stay nice and even. 20 stitches in each row. 
every row begins with a chain two, we turn, we skip that first stitch because it's already being used, double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into each stitch across, double crochet into the top of the turning chains. You want six rows in total using this first color for our bottom middle patch. Once you have six rows for our first patch, that's the bottom middle patch, you'll have 20 stitches in each row. Count them up, make sure there's six rows in total. You can snip your yarn, fasten off, flip your work, and we've completed the bottom middle patch. We're moving on to the middle middle patch now. <laughs> so grab that color. We're going to begin with a slip knot. And we're going to join our yarn in the top of the last stitch we made. So just slip your hook underneath the stitch, not the knot. You're using the stitch. And I'm going to work over top of my short tails. You can, of course, leave them out to the end and weave them in later. We're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch. I like to tug my tails into the center. And like every row, we begin with a chain two. That chain two counts as a stitch, and you can clearly see that now. It's literally built right into the top of that stitch from the previous row. And we're off. Double crochet in each stitch across. Double crochet into the top of the chain are the turning chains from the previous row. It's the top of the chain two. You'll have 20 stitches in each row and you want to work this color for six rows in total. Don't forget to chain two, turn at the end of every row, skip that first stitch, and don't forget to work into the top of the turning chains when you get to the end of a row. 20 stitches in every row. I'll see you at the end of row 12. Six more rows in our second color now, and that is the center patch of our square. Count them up. You should have 20 stitches in every row, including your turning chains, and six rows in total. You can snip your yarn, fasten off, flip your work, and of course we are now moving into the top middle patch. So that's six more rows of 20 stitches each, in whatever your top middle patch color is. For me, I'm moving back to blue. We start the same way with a slip knot on our hook. We're going to join with a slip stitch in the top of that last stitch from row 12. Chain two to begin. and double crochet in every single stitch across, including the top of the turning chains. Just like the previous two squares, six rows in total, 20 stitches per row. And I'll see you at the end of row 18. And that's the top middle patch done. Six more rows, 20 stitches each, including the turning chains, and that's row 18. You can fasten off your yarn, And you don't have to turn it. It doesn't really matter because both sides are sort of the same. You just want to sort of rotate your square because we're going to work our patch now down the entire raw side of the middle part of our square. So to show you that, we've done the three middle bits. We've turned it and now we're going to work this patch, patch number one, back and forth across all three of those patches. So if you want to grab that color, go ahead and do that. So we're going to take our color, and like every other row we've started, we're going to begin with a slip knot. It's a nice slip knot on our hook. Pick up your, well, middle patches, and we're going to be working down the raw side of all these stitches. So we're going to be continuing with the double crochet stitch. We're going to work two double crochet into the edge of each row. There's 18 rows, so that means we'll have 36 stitches running all the way down the side of our little block here. I'm going to join my yarn by splitting that stitch in half. And you want to work through the stitches, not around the stitches, because if you work around the stitches, you're going to create gaps. You don't need to do that. Again, you can leave your little tails to the end and weave them in later, or work over top of them like I'm going to. Chain two to begin. 
the chain two still counts as a double crochet. And before we finish with this row edge, we're going to work another double crochet into the edge of that stitch. So this is a double crochet stitch that's along the edge of that row. So you're going to work a double crochet stitch into the first half and one into the second half of that stitch. The next row edge is actually a couple of chains, so that would have been the chain two. You can slip your hook right through the middle of the chains, so try to get a couple of loops on your hook. And you're just evenly spacing out your stitches. I'm tugging on my little tails again. Here's the next row edge, so that's that one. Here's the next row edge. I'm going to work a double crochet through the middle top of that stitch and another one through the bottom of that stitch. Again, using a couple, oops, see now I didn't grab two loops and you can really see how it pulls up there. So I'm going to do that again. I want to try and get right through the middle and get two loops of the stitch over top of my hook. That just anchors it so much better. And you see that now it's not pulling. There isn't a great big sort of space there. The next row edge was a chain two. So I'm going to work right through the top of that chain and then I'll try and get again two parts of that chain running over top of my hook. There's no real fine science to this. You'll hear me say that a lot. You just want to work through the side of the stitch, not around it. Try to get at least two parts of the stitch on the top of your hook because that makes for a nice anchored even edging. We're working two double crochet into the edge of every single row and you're going to do that all the way down. So there's six rows in each patch, which means there'll be 12 stitches along the edge of each patch. So if it's easier for you to break it down that way, count 12 as you work down the side of each patch. You'll have 36 stitches at the end of this first row. There's the first row of our patch number one, so that long rectangular patch that runs down the side of our block. And you should have 12 double crochets, including that chain two that began, along the edge of each patch. So 36 double crochets in total, nice and even, running from the top to the bottom. The rest of it is pretty familiar. You're going to chain two and turn for the beginning of the next row. Skip that first stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet in each stitch across. Don't forget to double crochet your last stitch of the row into the top of the chain two. And you're going to do this for four rows in total. So four rows for this patch, chain two turn at the end, double crochet across, and don't forget to double crochet into the top of the chain two. You will have 36 stitches in each row. That's four rows of 36 stitches per row. And that includes your turning chains. Once you've got four rows, you can snip your yarn, fasten off, and then you're going to flip your entire square over and you're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So we've just done patch number one. We worked it like this. We're going to just spin the whole thing around and you're going to do patch number five over here on the other side. And it's built exactly the same way that number one is. Once you've worked patch number five exactly the same way as you made patch number one across the other side of your square, so that's four more rows, all 36 stitches per row. You can snip your yarn, fasten off, and take a moment to weave in all of your little tails. We're going to add our border now. So you're going to grab your border color and this is a row that's worked all the way around the outside of our square. Like our other colors, we're going to begin with a slip knot on our hook. And you can choose either side, so either long side 
uh, patch one or patch five to start on. It doesn't matter. If you're starting at the top of a chain two, so see how this is an actual stitch? That is not the top of the chain two. So you want to slip your hook into the top of the chain two, and you can see that it's sitting on top of that stitch there, because you don't want to skip the chain two, and sometimes it's nice to start in the top of it, just so you know you haven't missed it. We're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch. So again, you can see I'm joined in the top of the chain two, and I'm not using the actual stitch next to it. We're going to chain two to begin. Chain two counts as a double crochet. That's the first stitch in our border. And now you're just going to work a double crochet in each stitch all the way across. And including that chain two that counts as a double crochet, you'll have 36 stitches at the end of the first side of your border row. At the end of your first row, so your chain two counts as a double crochet, you'll have 36 double crochets worked across that first side. Nice and easy because they're all stitches that you can work into. You're going to chain two to turn the corner and we're going to work down the side of, we've got two raw sides and then some, some stitches in the middle here. So now, and this might be stitches or it might be foundation chains. It depends on what side you're on, but they operate the same way. We're going to work a two double crochet into the edge of each of these four rows. So you can work the first double crochet, if you like, into the same place that you worked the last double crochet on side one. And then one more double crochet just to round out the side of that first row. And then two more double crochet per row. So you're going to have eight double crochet worked down the raw side of each end of your long rectangular patches. So four rows, that means two double crochet per row edge. That's eight double crochet. There we go. Just get them in there any way you can that feels good. There's two, four, six, eight. That's the raw edge of that rectangular patch all done. Then you've got 20 stitches to work across the middle patch and another eight to work across the raw side of patch number five or one, whichever you're on there. So 20 across the middle, another eight across the other side. That'll be 36 stitches for side two. So that's the beginning of side two where we chain two, worked a double crochet into the same place as the last stitch. That makes a nice corner. Eight double crochet across that side of that patch, 20 double crochet across the middle patch. And remember, there's a chain two in there. So don't forget to use that, the top of that chain two of that patch, or just make sure you have 20 stitches across there. And then another eight worked across the top of the other side of that second rectangular patch. Chain two. Turn for side number three. I'm going to work a double crochet into the same place that I worked my last double crochet of my second side. And then we're on another side that's all stitches. So there's my chain two over there. I'm not going to forget to work a double crochet into the top of that chain two. You should have 36 easily placed double crochet stitches all the way across the side. Number three. Here's the beginning of side three. So chain two, double crochet into the same place we worked the last stitch on side two. Double crochet in each stitch all the way across. That's pretty easy because that's all double crochets from the edge of that patch. I double crocheted into the top of the chain two, not to miss it. So there's 36 stitches across side three as well. Chain two, turn. I'm gonna work a double crochet into the same place that I worked the last double crochet of side three. And it's the home stretch. This is side four. It's just like side two. You're going to work eight double crochet in total. So I've already got one across the raw side of this rectangular patch, 20 across the middle patch. And for me, those are foundation chains, but still nonetheless easy to grab. 
and another eight double crochet worked across the other side of this rectangular patch. So 36 double crochet in total. Take your time, make sure you've got eight across the edge of each rectangular patch and 20 across the middle. So that's side number four. We chained two and double crocheted into the same place that we worked the last stitch of side three. That's eight double crochet across the edge of that rectangular patch, 20 across the middle. So there's one worked into the bottom of each of those stitches. That was my first patch that I made, the bottom middle patch. And then eight double crochet worked across the raw edge of the second rectangular patch, two, four, six, eight. My last double crochet, I worked it into the same place that I started my chain two from, that I began the entire border row with. I'm going to chain two to turn my last corner and join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain two. So just poke my hook right through the top of that chain two, join with a slip stitch, there's my last corner space, and I can fasten off and weave in my tail. The fun thing about this square, and really any of the squares we've done, is that you can use it so that it looks like you've got a big letter I, or like you've got a big letter H. And there you go, the big blocks square, or blocks of color, or I. <laughs> any way you look at it, it's a lot of fun, and of course, depending on how you color it, you get a completely different look too. We hope you enjoyed making the October Square along with us today, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye, everybody! Hi, everyone. This is Mama and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe, and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.